So littles learn through play. No matter what you've seen on that blog post or that video, tinies don't need fancy toys or curriculum to learn. They play by using the objects around them. And today we're gonna take a look at some ways that you can keep your tinies busy while working with your older kids, but also make it meaningful time. None of these tips have anything to do with screens. So please rest assured that what you're gonna see here is going to be very simple, very low prep and no tech. While homeschooling, our older kids definitely need our attention. They need a caring, attentive adult nearby. However, we might have tinies running around at the same time, and we need to make sure that they're safe and occupied with beneficial things for them. So today, let's go ahead and take a look at these five ways that we can keep our tinies occupied and busy while also working with our bigs. And again, none of them involve screens. Let's get started. Okay, little kids love to experiment and touch things. We all know this. They've probably touched things they shouldn't. But let's start out with something that will actually help them develop their hands. We may know that little hands, little bones, are not ready to pick up a pencil and start writing properly yet. So in order to develop that, give your kids some Play-Doh or rice or flour or cornstarch. However, one of these is not like the other and that Play-Doh is actually not as messy as the other one. So later on find other ways to use some of those other ho household kitchen items for developing hand strength. But for now, let's go ahead and take a look at Play-Doh. I tend to make stovetop Play-Doh. Just go Google it or watch another YouTube video on it. All of them are pretty much the same thing. Flour, salt, water, maybe a little cream of tartar and that's basically it. If you want, you could add some of their favorite color, make it that color with food coloring, or just leave it white and allow them to add in their toys. Um, again, this is all edible stuff. So if you've got an eater, you know who I'm talking about, uh, you don't have to worry about this, although it does taste pretty bad because of all the salt. So hopefully they won't do it more than once. When our littles were high chair age, I used to plop them in their high chair close to me doing work with the older kid, give them a ball of Play-Doh and maybe a few select cookie cutters and allow them to go to town on that. That was a fantastic way to keep them safe and occupied. When they're older, I actually plopped them on the kitchen floor with a place mat and gave them all the cookie cutters and a lot of kitchen utensils like uh, rolling pins and different uh, safe tools for them to use and, and explore uh, these textures and different things that they could do with their hands. So it's a fun way to keep them occupied and actually very helpful and beneficial. One thing I will say is you don't want to add another thing to your list. So keep these utensils, maybe have them make it their own little bucket, make their own little bucket of Play-Doh utensils, put them in a cup or a container of some sort, um, put them on a shelf where they can get to them on their own, and then put the Play-Doh in a plastic bag and put it on the bottom shelf of the fridge somewhere where they can access it on their own. If they're like, hey, what can I do? Or you're ready to sit down and get to work with your older child, you can just say, go grab your Play-Doh, go grab your tools and a uh, setup right here, something like that. So it's an easy thing if you can go ahead and shortcut those procedures as well. Number two, coloring pages. Old oh, faithful, man. Now, Melissa, you just said that uh, kids aren't ready to write. Yeah, but that doesn't mean they shouldn't write. <laughs> so they're not writing perfectly formed letters, but they might be using crayons or colored pencils. Yeah no markers yet, please. Uh, and maybe you've got a packet of things that you've printed out. Maybe you're printing them on demand. Uh, we want, you know, a certain character or a certain topic or a certain animal. Um, you know, they're out there. Just Google the picture and print out what you find. Um, it's quick and easy and usually free. Again, putting the tinies in a high chair to do this uh, is a great idea. Try to keep everything contained or have them go on the floor, um, putting placemats out or even a cookie sheet uh, or a tray. They can take it with them. That might feel uh, very individual for them while you're working with an older child. If you want them close by, that's a great thing to do. If you need them further away just for noise sake, um, you can set them up safely in another area where you can keep an eye on them. Number three, this was my favorite tip. I don't know who told me this, but early on when we had babies, kitchen items are toys, usually. Here's what I mean by that. Um, a lot of the things in our kitchens are not dangerous. Uh, we just need to group them together. So for our family, we were able to create an entire cabinet of plastic or non-breakable items. This allowed our tinies to open the cabinets as they always do, don't they? It's like an instinct and pull everything out. Now, this might create a disaster, but your older kids might want to help. 
or it might just be a good learning point for you to then teach them how to stack things, how to put them back in there. It's going to be a mess. You know, I, I should probably put a disclaimer here. Our family does a lot. We're very productive people. However, not high on my priority list will you find a clean, spotless house. We are hygienic people, but we are not organized and aesthetic. So I don't put much stock in a perfectly organized cabinet. If that's you, maybe ignore this point, but I think it's a really awesome thing to take advantage of. And if you're working with a child close by, maybe at the table, you can keep an eye on them, make sure they're safe while they're making chaos in the kitchen. Please don't discount muffin tins. Muffin tins are a fantastic thing for sorting. Give your child um, a basket full of colored toys that are safe for them. Have them put certain toys in an order or two in one of them or one in another. Your choice, but there are different ways that they can uh, enjoy those kitchen tools. And those are extra toys that we don't have to buy. Number four, Legos, blocks, couch cushions. Let's just call this the building category. If these materials are at your kid's disposal, for example, a drawer full of Legos or a box full of blocks, that's fun, or a couch with cushions that are removable, um, kids are going to take advantage of that. And so what we love to do is just say, hey, I need quiet over here as I'm working with your older sibling go build me something out of Legos, or let's see what you can do with these blocks, or how about a fort with the couch? Um, our kids have had a field day with this, and I think one of the keys to making it successful is then teaching them how to clean up afterward. <laughs> Again, aesthetics are not high on my priority list, so it is not below me to take a cardboard box, cut a notch out of it, and throw all the blocks in there, throw all the Legos in there. That way it's easier for kids to pick up or drag, to another area of the house to play so that we can have quiet over here while we're doing schoolwork. Um, definitely something to keep in mind um, so that kids can you know, have that independence and that responsibility to clean up but also pull out their materials on their own. Number five is physical activity. We have our kids up and moving a lot throughout the day. However, one of the things that we can encourage is independent physical activity. I've already mentioned our house is not very aesthetic, but also our house is not very quiet. And so a lot of times we'll pull out um, an old phone that we use just for uh, school stuff and kids stuff. Um, I'll turn on a playlist, an energetic playlist. Maybe it's something um, mythological or very adventurous. We'll put on uh, Narnia music, the soundtrack, or Harry Potter, or um, Brave, the soundtrack. Uh, Lord of the Rings, great music that's kind of adventurous, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean as well, or something energetic, energetic fiddle, uh, Celtic music, it will get children moving. So I'll turn on that playlist, put it out of reach, um, and that playlist just plays. There's no requests here. I'm going to leave that over in one side of the house while I work with the older sibling somewhere else. Um, it's a great way to get kids dancing, get kids moving. And again, if we mix numbers four and five together, maybe we've got blocks and Legos and the Legos are turned into swords of some sort. Who knows? Uh, the couch cushions get turned into like a river or a boat. The imaginations run wild. So it's really fun to see what can come of this. Um, let it fly, let it fly. Just back away and see what they do. We often try to get them um, doing exercise somehow. And so if you've got an outdoor space, we happen to have like an upstairs um, patio where it's safe for kids to be um, without you know, constant supervision. And so the idea is that they can ride their bikes, they can scooter, they can skate, they can um, play with chalk out here and I don't have to worry about them, um, but check in with them. So it's another good option to play independently um, and also have our time to get other work done with the bigs. So this is what's worked with us with four kids. This was one of my early worries with homeschool. How am I going to keep everybody alive, <laughs> uh, safe, healthy, and getting their work done while staying sane and not being an angry mom, not being the mom I don't want to be, but being the mom that I do want to be, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so it's been a really joyful thing to watch our kids learn how to entertain themselves without a screen um, and also get the work done and enjoy being around their siblings. Not perfectly but a lot of the time. Again, this independent time ends and the littles are able to sit on the counter and help me make lunch, run errands with me or help me on some other household task. So we do have our time together and we're able to play together. However, um, these are things that we do with them. Um, I do have another video full of pre-K and kinder activities that are kind of like a morning menu, if you've heard of that. These are things that kids can choose from or I can choose for them um, and guide our time together as well. That's a little bit more play and choice oriented. 
So did I miss anything? What are your go-to activities for your littles while you're working with your bigs? Leave those in the comments below. If you've got a question, I would be happy to answer it. If I can, leave it down there. And if nobody's told you yet today, thanks for what you're doing. It's important. Happy teaching.